Um, let's see, well, number one, how do I start prospecting without a network of buyers? Number one, you can find buyers a lot easier than you realize. Start prospecting for sellers and you can then flip the script and say like, hey, I was calling you about your property, one, two, three, Main Street. They said they don't want to sell that property. You can just be like, listen, I, I hear you don't want to sell, but I'm just curious. If I came across a pretty good deal that maybe doesn't make sense for my client, would I be able to send it your way? Are you totally against buying another property? So I definitely would be trying to find a way to attract more buyers into your world because you want to be able to prospect specifically for buyers. Also just know like if you find a really, really good deal, you can just prospect around that property. Run two, three main streets, a really good deal. You call it 127, 124, 125, 126, whatever, right? You can prospect all around that property of a bunch of properties because especially on Reonomy or CoStar, you can see all the people who just bought a property in the last 12 months. Common myths regards to commercial real estate, common myths. What, what are some common myths? That it's easy, that it's fast, you can earn money really quick. You know, that commission checks, you can make really, really big commission checks. That's not a myth. You can earn some freaking crazy good money in uh, a commercial real estate. State, but I would say that it won't come quickly, right? It does take some time. I'd say on average, it takes 12 to 24 months to earn some really good size commission checks. I think it's also easier. I think that you can just jump right into commercial real estate without much expertise and you can start making phone calls. You can be incredibly successful. So it's, it's a myth that uh, you have to be in it for a long time. Is there a way to make it feel like you aren't waiting for clients on their time span? That's a good question. This is why I stress prospecting so much because I'll give you an example. I have like 20 some odd sellers okay, that I've been in touch with, that I know they want to sell their property, I've already given them an offer that they want, and I know that if I got them on the phone, we can do some business together, but I'm just waiting for them to get back to me. This is why you need to have a lot of leads in the pipeline, because if you don't, you're going to be wondering where your next paycheck is coming from. So always be prospecting, not always be closing, always be prospecting. As a newer real estate agent, what should I prioritize my day-to-day -day to generate leads? Prospecting, 8 a.m. to 12 noon at least, 8 a.m. to 12 noon, every single day, Monday through Friday minimum, I probably even say Saturday and Sunday if you're brand new. Do a Saturday or a Sunday. You can, you know, take a day off. I'm not saying don't take a day off, but depends on what you want. You know, for about four years straight, I don't do this anymore, but for about four years straight, when I was in, you know, newer in the industry, I prospected like, I can't even tell you, like I think it was uh, about a hundred conversations a day for about five to six days a week. I mean, just crazy. At least three to four hours a day of prospecting would be the best way to prioritize your day. The second part of prioritizing your day is gonna be two more things, which is follow up and submitting letters of intent. If you wanna make a lot of money in commercial real estate, prospect for new leads, follow up on old leads, and then number three, submit LOIs, okay? That's the most important. Do you cold call on the weekends? And have you found more success on weekends or throughout the week? Call every day, man. Call every single day, five, six, seven days a week. Does not matter. Call every day. I would call every single day. It's really hard to screw up when you have a lot of leads in your pipeline. And if you don't have a lot of leads in your pipeline, I would prospect until you have a lot of leads in your pipeline. How do you steer the conversation after you have an interested buyer? That means you have a deal and then you pitch it to a buyer and that buyer is interested. So what's going to happen next is you're going to make a, you know, draft a letter of intent and submit an offer on that property. Let's just say you got a $2 million deal. You pitch the deal to the buyer. The buyer goes, listen, I'll do a deal at one nine. You go back to the seller who said two million and you say listen I got an offer for you for one seven got a guy at one nine you pitch the, you go back to the seller at one seven. And the reason why you do this is when you make sure that you're going to make your 6% commission, right? So that way you can earn some big checks. You go back at one seven, the seller says I can't do one seven, I'll do one eight five. Now the now you go back to the buyer and you can go back to the buyer and say, listen, the seller countered you back at two million bucks or one nine five. And he goes, Okay, I'll do one nine five. You got him at one nine five, seller says one eight five, boom, you got a deal for a hundred grand at commission check. Tips for prospecting in a small market, less than five hundred thousand, guessing less than five hundred thousand people. In a small market, also note, Nate, that you can easily grow geographically. You don't have to prospect in your backyard. Just because you live somewhere doesn't mean you need to prospect somewhere, right? I live right now, I'm in South Beach, Miami, Florida. Okay, and I prospect in New Jersey. So it's important to note that like, it really doesn't matter where you live. So you can prospect anywhere. I would prospect where the best properties that you can possibly find are in your state because your license there, right? Nonetheless, if you're in a small market, I would try to prospect. You need to know your average price point. So let's just say like super luxury is 10 million bucks or like that's like the highest price points. Call like the, the one to $3 million range. There's probably a lot of volume in that range, you know, or hypothetically, maybe it's a 500,000 to 2 million range, right? Like that, that might be a good range, but you just need to know like, okay, like where is there a lot of volume and prospect that type of product?